Good afternoon. Welcome to Carroll Community College's virtual open house. My name is Candace Edwards. I'm the Senior Director of Enrollment Development at Carroll. We are super excited that you decided to log in and join us today. Stick with us through this presentation, which will last approximately about 45 minutes. Our goal is to give you the info you need about the programs we have, how to navigate the whole entire process, the steps to admission, timeline to apply to Carroll, financial aid, all the things that you have to be involved in here. So we're gonna run you through all of those things. So the first thing that I wanna tell you, and I need to let everyone know, is that this is being recorded. So the entire video presentation is being recorded. It will be posted on our open house page on the website for future reference, and you can go back to look at it. There's going to be, a Q, or there is a Q&A live chat happening throughout the whole session. So if you have a question, you can post it in the chat and we will answer in the chat. However, if you're using your email or your phone in the chat, that's also gonna be posted on the live video afterwards. So if you don't want anyone to see your email or your phone number, you might wanna wait until after the presentation is over. And we are going to be sending an email out to you asking if you have any follow-up questions. So you'll be able to follow up in that way. You'll be able to contact the, the admissions office via phone or with the admissions email address anytime, or we'll schedule an appointment to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. So there's many different ways to get your questions answered after the event, if you still have them, if you, do, if you choose not to use the chat. The chat will continue after the event is over too. So what's gonna happen is myself and the two other assistant directors of admission will be taking turns talking about different topics throughout the event, through the whole presentation to keep things a little bit more interesting than just watching me the entire time. So I'm gonna start off with the presentation for about the first 15 minutes, and then they're gonna go on to other topics. And when that happens, they're gonna introduce themselves when they become live. So right now, how we're gonna start off is we're just gonna do a very fast 30 minute commercial clip, um, which will show you some footage of the campus and hopefully generate a little bit of excitement. And then I'll come right back to you and we'll start the presentation right away. Life is an adventure. So is going to college. Start your adventure at Carroll Community College. Okay, okay, so hopefully that was a little bit of excitement. You got to see some footage of the campus and we can't wait to invite you all onto the physical campus to show you around, hopefully pretty soon. But for now, at least you get a little bit of a snippet of it. So we are gonna just again, I'm Candace Edwards in case anyone just joined. I know people are still logging in. I'm the Senior Director of Enrollment Development at Carroll Community College. We're gonna go on with an information session presentation right now, about 40 minutes long. And we'll have time to talk with everyone one-on-one, -on -one, answer questions in the live chat the whole time and this is being recorded just so you know. All right, so the biggest question on everyone's mind, of course, regardless if you're coming to Carroll or any college right now is, are you gonna be open in the fall? How are classes gonna be offered? What is gonna be the format? And so, of course, our first priority is the safety of our students, our faculty and our staff. Of course, things keep on changing over and over again right now, but what we have planned for the fall, as we know it right now, is what we're going to do. So we're gonna kind of walk you through the different formats of classes that we have so that you know, as you are meeting with an advisor to register for classes, what to kind of be looking for. Just know for brand new students, whether you're dual enrolled and taking one class, a visiting student taking one class, or if you're a full-time student, we are going to, we meet with all students for the first time that they go to register for classes. So you're not gonna have to do this alone. We just want you to have an idea of what it's going to look like. So the first way that we're gonna be offering classes will be if you look at the fall schedule, it says on campus and then in parentheses, it says lecture. So the first way that we'll be offering classes is face-to-face -face at the college as you normally would attend classes. And so what you'll do, if you're looking at the bottom, there's three different, there's like a snippet of courses here. And so at the bottom, you'll see the location would say main campus with a room number, building number, and it says lecture. Then under times, this class is going to meet on Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 10 to 10.55 a.m. So 
you know that if you register for that particular class, you'll be coming to the campus for a live class as you normally would. Of course, there's going to be some social distancing protocols that need to happen to make sure that everyone is staying safe. So people will be, uh, the classes will be smaller than they normally would be. So if a class is normally 20 or 25 students, it'll be probably eight to 10 students maximum. So there will be social distancing, people will be wearing masks, the instructor will be wearing a mask just for the safety of everyone. But we do know it's important to offer classes in this format, especially classes that have a lab component, a hands-on component of some sort that really is most conducive in the classroom setting. The other uh, thing that's going to be happening is we will have some lessons, music lessons, some clinical um, components that are happening face to face in the classroom as well. So that's the first way we're planning to do this. The second option for classes is going to be fully online in parentheses. It says net. So my assistant in the background is circling the top. You can see it says locations is going to be internet online. The time says TBD. What that means is that you're taking the whole class in an online format. We use Canvas. Canvas is our learning management system platform. So you will log into Canvas. It's going to be an asynchronous class. Asynchronous means that you are going to log in. You're going to have a syllabus. You're going to have all the course components, all the instruction, kind of the outline for the class and how it's going to work. You'll know what your assignments are going to um, be like, when they're going to be due. You'll have assignment deadlines that you're going to have to adhere to. But the nice part about online asynchronous classes is that you can log in. If, if today at three o'clock in the afternoon is a good time for you to work on your class, you can log into your class at three o'clock in the afternoon. If tomorrow 8 a.m. is better, great. You can do 8 a.m. tomorrow. And then on Friday, if 11 p.m. is good for you, that's when you do it. So you have access to your class all the time. You just need to make sure that you're keeping up with timelines, deadlines, turning in your assignment, and most, most important is that you're logging into your class daily, um, very frequently, just to make sure that you're keeping up with everything that is happening within your class. Organized time management, those are all the things that are really good with online classes that are asynchronous. It's a great way to learn. We've been doing this for a long time, so if you take a class in that format with us, it's going to be wonderful. So that's going to be another way. So a new way for us to be offering classes is remote synchronous. So that's going to be kind of in the middle section. If you look at locations, it says location is Teams and it says remote synchronous. And then if you look under times, there's times of Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 8 to 8.55. What this means is that you are gonna log into Microsoft Teams, which is what we're using right now. It's just like Zoom. We know that everyone's pretty familiar with Zoom at this point. Same thing really, but we are licensed with Microsoft Teams. So when you're registered as a student at Carroll, you're going to um, have access to this once you set up your account. You will log in to Microsoft Teams at these times and you will have an instructor teaching the class just as if they would teach it in the classroom at the college. You're not gonna go to the college, but you'll log into your class and it'll be the same remotely like this, but you're gonna have your instructor live teaching at the times that you're supposed to be taking your class. So that's called remote synchronous. It's happening all live at the same time. And then of course you'll do whatever work you would have to be doing outside of the classroom in normal circumstances, just the same way. Another way would be a hybrid mix. So hybrid mix format would be typically meeting one day a week on campus so that you have a little bit of face-to-face -face time with your instructor. You'll have that, and then you'll do the rest of your coursework um, on your own at your own pace. So that's how that will work or online in an asynchronous for, uh, format for the rest of the week. We know that this is really critical information and important, and I'm trying to practice talking slowly right now, but I'm probably kind of moving fast still. So we are gonna cover this slide again later in the presentation when we talk about registration. Josiah will cover this later on. So you'll have another chance to kind of catch up with this again. Okay, so moving forward. Why Carol? There are so many wonderful reasons to come to Carol. You're just gonna love it if you come here. You're gonna have a wonderful, wonderful experience, whether you're part-time, full-time, visiting, duly enrolled, whatever it is. So the greatest things that we like to talk about about Carol is tuition cost is always lower. Your courses are gonna transfer, whether it's one or many. Programs and degrees transfer, and we are always close to home. 
we have so many students that choose to stay and, and go to Carroll to start off their college experience all the time because they have jobs that they don't want to leave here. They're working part time. They have commitments at home, all kinds of reasons. So the easiest answer for coming to Carroll is that you're going to have an incredible experience period, whether you're taking just one class, you're taking a certification through continuing education and training, or you're completing a degree. You won't want to leave us. We are truly here to serve our students, and you are going to feel that the moment you walk in the door. Okay. Tuition and affordability. We think that a lot of people understand, you know, that college tuition, it, it's pricey. It is, no matter where you go, and it is an expense that you're going to have to think about, especially if it, in this uncertain environment. So, what we have here is a slide that talks about, you know, the University of Maryland system, the general pricing for that. So there's different ways that you can look at it. If you want to have that residential for your college experience and you're going to a University of System school, in general, if it's going to be residential, it's going to be around $24,000 a year. So if you're going to go live on campus at one of the public schools in, the, in Maryland, in general, about $24,000 a year. If you're going to commute to campus, meaning just like you would to Carroll, if you're going to drive back and forth to your classes, around $11,000 a year. It varies a little bit between all of the public schools, but in general, that's what you can expect to pay. Stevenson would be another example. Stevenson is a private school in the state of Maryland, but a very popular option for many students. So you can see the residential, if you're going to live on campus cost, is going to be over $50,000. And if you're commuting, driving back and forth, it's going to be around $28,000. So I want you to realize that this is the price tag before there's any kind of financial aid, any kind of tuition uh, grants, any kind of scholarship. So this is the price that you would pay before you have any of those things applied. But when you look at your financial aid package, when you do see what your tuition amount after all those things are applied are going to be, we realize that sometimes it seems a little bit out of reach and maybe not totally as doable as you might have thought it was for four years. So if we go on, if we move on to Carroll, tuition cost is lower. It is lower because it's being supplemented through the county, the state, and tuition, of course. So if you look at the cost breakdown for Carroll Community College, for 30 credits is what we want you to accomplish in one year. So if you're a full-time student and you want to complete your AA degree in two years, you have to take approximately 30 credits a year. If you're a full-time student for one semester, you're going to take about 15 credits a semester. So rather than paying tuition up front for the entire year, you're paying for the amount of credits that you're actually taking, however you end up taking them. But to give the comparison, if you're taking 30 credits, which would be equal to one year of commuter tuition, our tuition cost for in-county residents is going to be just over $5,000. Now that doesn't include the cost of books and supplies, but it, it includes the cost of tuition, all the support services that you would need, getting involved in anything on campus. So it's just over $5,000. If you're an out-of-county resident, we have many out-of-county residents that prefer to come to Carroll because of the commute, just because of reputation, they like us. So the 30 credits for the out-of-county rate is just over $8,000 for the year. And for our PA residents and any residents that are out of state that like to come and see us and come and take classes with us, it's just over $11,000 a year. So just know that there is a tuition difference depending on if you're in county, out of county, or out of state, but everyone is welcome to take classes with us. If you're taking just one class as an in-county resident, so you're duly enrolled, a visiting student, it's $516 for a three credit class. And many of the lab sciences are a little more, they're about 688 because they're four credit classes. So we know that this can still be a very large expense for students. We will talk about financial aid, loans, the College Promise Scholarship a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, but the biggest thing that I can tell you right now and the thing that I want you to really remember is if you register early, so registration is ongoing until classes begin for our full fall semester, which begins on August 31st. So registration is ongoing until then, but many people have restricted schedules and they have course formats that they really want to, you know, make sure that they get. So the sooner that you register for classes, the more likely are you are to get the schedule that you want at the times and days that you need, the format that you want, and you can Register and then you can 
um, sign up for the payment plan, which can break up your payment into monthly tuition installments, interest-free. There's no interest for that. There is a, a nominal registration free fee to set up the payment plan, but then you get to break your tuition into monthly installments, which doesn't reduce the cost of tuition, but it does make it much more manageable for many families, so you don't have to pay it in all one lump sum. So just realize that the sooner that you register, the better off you'll be. You can set up the payment plan to spread out the payments to make it a little bit more manageable. Classes start on August 31st. The closer we get to classes beginning, there will be classes for you to register for, but it will be more difficult to get the exact time frames that you want. It'll be harder to get the formats that you want. You can always make adjustments to schedule uh, to your schedule after you have registered initially. And this is the other thing is this is what we want you to consider the cost saving. So like I was talking about on the last slide, when you get that final tuition bill for a four year school and you realize, wow, this is going to be really, you know, we might be taking on some, some debt that we weren't thinking that we were going to be able to do. It might be a little bit more than we were thinking. So many students start at Carroll. They pay that reduced tuition rate for the first two years. And by paying that reduced tuition rate for the first two years, suddenly it becomes more affordable to go and live on campus for just two years at the higher tuition rate. So if you're paying the lesser rate for two years, then that higher cost can be more manageable for the last two years. So just keep those things in mind. Your courses are going to transfer. So the biggest question we get is, you know, I'm going to take a statistics class while I'm in high school, while I'm duly enrolled, I'm home for the summer and I want to take a class and I want to know if it's going to transfer to my school. And so within the state of Maryland, we have a really wonderful tool. Uh, I'm not going to go to the website because it takes too long to navigate between those things, but I have some screenshots to show you over the next few slides. So what is going to happen is you're going to meet with an academic advisor and academic advisors talk to students during their first scheduled advising meeting and try to get a sense from students about their program path, get a sense of where they think students might go next for planning purposes, and taking the correct program courses is very, very helpful. So the example that we're going to show you right now is um, in ARTSIS, which is our articul articulation system tool in the state of Maryland. Now, this is just simply a tool. Like I said, your advisor is going to assist you with this. But the example that I'm showing right now is you can select a transfer institution, which is Carroll Community College, and where you want to go, which I'm choosing Towson for today's purposes. And then I have typed in as a course Math 115, which is statistics at Carroll Community College. So if we move to the next slide, you'll see that Math 115 at Carroll Community College transfers under the equivalency as Math 231 Basic Statistics at Towson. It's a general education math, which means it's going to tra transfer as a general education math class, and it says, yes, it transfers. So this is a really wonderful tool for students to use when they're trying to figure out, okay, is this class going to go with me if I if I transfer to Towson or whatever other school that you're looking at? I'm going to pause for a minute and say the website for this, which also can be accessed from our website, is A-R-T-S-Y-S artsis.usmd.edu. I'll repeat that in a minute, just in case you didn't catch that. So I'll repeat it on the next slide. So for planning purposes, this is going to show you this class is going to transfer. Now, one thing that people ask all the time and talk about all the time is, well, my class didn't transfer. I took that. I looked it up in ArtSys. It didn't transfer. So in those cases, what sometimes happens is maybe you've taken statistics, but an example at Towson would be you become a psychology major. And for the psychology major at Towson, they require you to have applied calculus. So it's not that the statistics isn't a class that transfers to Towson, it does. However, the program math requirement might be a little bit different than the one that you took. In that case, it would be applied calculus with a psychology example. So those are things that come into play sometimes. And so you have to make the best decisions that you can at the times that you know what you're going to do. On the next slide, it's showing us, and I'm going to say the ARTSIS website again, which is artsys.usmd.edu, and I'll say it one more time before I'm done. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to select a transfer program. This is just a snapshot of a few of the programs that they have at Towson. So on the next slide, it's going to show you I've selected accounting. On the top of this, it's going to show you all of the program courses that are going to be required for Towson as an accounting major. This is showing you the actual program classes, accounting, economics, business, communication. You can see statistics, Math 115 is there for accounting. So it's showing you all of those classes and then the rest of them are general education classes, which means that you can kind of make some choices within general education classes for your science classes, for example. You'll have choices between biology and geosciences and things like that. So this is one tool that you can use along with your advisor to determine if I wanna be an accounting major at Carroll and then I wanna to transfer to Towson, here's the classes that I can be taking. Now your advisor, if you don't know where you're gonna go when you start at Carroll, that's okay, we understand. We understand many students come to Carroll because they're not really sure where they wanna go or what their direction is going to be. But we're gonna help you as much as we can, you know, start making some of those decisions and you might have it narrowed down to three schools. So then we will help make the best choices that we can during your first semester that would apply to all three schools that you're considering. So this is a great tool in the state of Maryland. Now, outside of the state of Maryland, they wanna help you too. We don't have an articulation system exactly like this, but many, many schools out of state and private schools have transfer equivalencies listed on their website. So you can go to their websites and you can get a lot of information. When you go to a website, usually it has two different ways that you can enter. It'll say freshman students or it'll say transfer students. And so if you select transfer students, often you can find out a lot of information about what they're going to accept. For really common school, community college schools that transfer into those schools, they have a lot of information or you can call them. They'll talk to you, they'd be happy to talk to you or you can visit when that's allowed. Okay, so your degree is going to transfer. One of the most wonderful things I think about schools in Maryland and community college AA degrees in the state of Maryland is that if you earn an AA degree in the state of Maryland, you are guaranteed to be admitted to a public school in the state of Maryland. So in many ways, it is much easier to get into a system school as a transfer student than it is right out of high school. If you're coming right out of high school, you know it's very competitive, very selective. You're competing against many, many students coming from all over the place. They're looking at standardized test scores like SATs and ACTs, high school requirements, all kinds of things, right? What your involvement has been. So if you um, have an AA degree already, you're guaranteed to be admitted. They want you because they know that you can be successful. You have proven that you can be successful in college level coursework, which is huge. So they know that you're gonna stay if they accept you into their college. So that's guaranteed. What's not guaranteed is if you are applying for a selective program, like a clinical nursing program, for example, or engineering at the University of Maryland. You still have to, you'll still get into the school, but you still have to be competitive, take the right prerequisite and gateway classes and earn certain grades to get directly into those programs. So that's still gonna be something that you're gonna work um, with at that school. So careful planning with an advisor is really important. You're gonna check with out-of-state schools because they want you to come there. They really, really do. Often private schools, public schools, all of them, they have really good transfer scholarships, especially if you're a great community college student, they have good merit-based scholarships for students because they want you to come and uh, you have a proven academic success record. If you wanna have that residential experience, you can start at Carroll, you can have a great, great, great transition, you can have a great two years, earn that AA degree, you can still have that wonderful residential experience wherever you want to go. If you want to go to UMB, UMBC and live there for the last two years, you'll be able to do that. So we really want you to consider this carefully. We want you to contact us. You, we want you to ask you, you to ask us questions about this. And then that website one more time is artsys, A-R-T-S-Y-S dot U-S-M-D dot E-D-U. You will meet with an, a dedicated advisor before you register for classes as a new student, if you're taking one class or you're taking a full scale of classes. So make sure that you schedule an appointment after this session today 
you will call and you will schedule an appointment. We'll give you that number later. You'll call and you'll schedule an appointment with an advisor and get the ball rolling after you've applied. So you'll apply, call and talk to the dedicated advisor and we'll get you all set up. So with, without further ado, I am going to turn this now over to Josiah Guthland, one of our assistant directors, and he'll introduce himself. Hello, future Linksers, Links students, Link plural. I think it's Links. I think we just say Links here. Uh, so why do students choose Carroll? I'm Josiah Guthland. I'm the assist, one of the assistant directors of admissions here at Carroll. And the reason students choose Carroll is we have small class sizes. And what that does is allow you to have a great learning environment and get to really know your teachers and the other people in your class and help build that network both in and out of the classroom so you can be successful in that course. We also have tutoring, free tutoring. Where else are you going to get free tutoring? Nowhere. Tutoring, both peer and professional, is something that none of us think we're ever going to need until we really, really need it. Like about week 12 out of 15 weeks, we're like, oh, we need some help now. Your best, your best resource is always your course instructor. They've graded all the homework you've done. They've graded all your tests and quizzes. They know exactly what you know and exactly what you don't know. OK, so we want to start with our course instructors. They love meeting with students. They have office hours set up, so go and meet with them in office hours. But if when the when the instructor explains it, if it's not if it's still not resonating with you, if you're not not making any sense, well, we have an academic center. We have a whole cadre of people up there ready to help you with math, science, English, Spanish, nursing, any other subject that we offer at Carroll. You can get some help up there at the tutoring center. Another thing we have is career planning and help. Who knows exactly what they want to be when they're a grown up? Just me. OK, good. Well, that's good. Uh, the average college student, they're going to change their college major like four times. So it's completely OK. If when you start at Carroll, you have no idea what you're going to be doing. That's OK. That, we love those students. It takes guts, it takes bravery to say, I don't know. I don't know what I want to be when I'm a grown up. I still don't know what I want to be when I'm a grown up. And I'm definitely old, so I should know by now. But we have career planning and help. All right, so we're going to help you figure out what you like, what you don't like, and how that translates to career opportunities. And that's through our advising and career office. It's right across the hallway from admissions. It's the second coolest office on campus behind us. Yeah, that's right. All right. So on the next slide, we're going to talk about student life and ways to get involved on campus. So research has shown that the more engaged you are on campus, the more successful you will be. So we have many things for you to be involved in both in and outside of the classroom to help build your skills, your personality, your leadership, all different types of things. In a typical semester, we'll have multiple trips off campus and many on campus events that are interactive, educational, and hopefully they're fun. Some of them are just for fun. Some of them are just educational. Some are a little bit of both. We work with a bunch of our local nonprofits around uh, Carroll County to give us a plethora of options for service, for giving back to the community that's done so much for us. We also have intramural sports in our fitness center. We've got dodgeball. We get we don't throw wrenches though. OK, does anyone get that reference? You in the back? Oh, good. Just one person. OK, um, but we also have soccer, basketball, all other sorts of great intramural sports that you guys can play. We also have over 20 different clubs and organizations at Carroll. Some are super academic, American Chemical Society, Education Club, and others are not academic at all, like Dungeons and Dragons and Hiking Club. And the Gamers Club, where they play like board games and video games and card games and Pokemon Go and other stuff, I'm sure. I'm old, so I don't really get it, but it's really cool for them. They're very happy about it. We also have tons of leadership opportunities on campus. Student government spots are open. We have five seats just for incoming freshmen. So if you're like, oh, well, I'm just starting. I don't, there's no way I can be on student government. Wrong. You can totally be on student government. We have five spots in our student government just for you. We want you to get involved, help your voice be heard on campus. It's also a very exciting time at Carroll as far as athletics is concerned. We are going to have our inaugural seasons of women's soccer, men's and women's lacrosse, and track. Yes, you could be one of the inaugural Linksers, Links 
athletes for track, unless you're slow, then you can't. But if you're slow, but you can throw things really far, then maybe you can. I don't know that much about track. I was not athletic in high school, obviously. Uh, we also have, but we are looking for those athletes right now. So to be an athlete, you need to have be a full time student. You got to do 12 credits and you also have to maintain that C plus average. We're keeping it really hard for you. Actually, that's like the rules. We have to keep you at a C plus average. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and contact the coach on the next slide for whichever sport that you're interested in. And if you don't see your sport on the slide, well, then you need to email, go to the carollinks.com. There's no S at the end of that. carollinks.com, and you can fill out a interest form on there and talk to the coaches, figure out what we're gonna do next. I know it's weird right now with COVID-19 and all that stuff going on, but we are really excited about our sports teams. We're really hoping to have sports in the 2020-2021 season. On the next slide there, you can see the Carol Lynx website. Website. I speak English, I promise. Uh, right there, you just go to the Prospective Athlete Form and you click on that. You can fill out your information. One of our coaches will reach out to you, talk to you about what you want to do. We are hoping um, to have your physical and all your eligibility stuff done by July 1st. So it's the end of May. You got a whole month to get that done. So let's get started on it right away. On the next slide, I want to talk about the difference between well, we have credit and non-credit. So traditional college that everyone thinks about, you know, Harvard, Yale, Carroll Community College, we're all like right there together, right, is the normal credit. That is the traditional four-year plan, business, computer, creative arts, education, become a nurse, a nurse, anything like that. So that is what's considered credit. Our non-credit or continuing education and training department is one of the programs that we offer, many different programs, that can get you set up for working and in, in earning those higher wages without having that four year degree. And so we have degrees, uh, so we have certificates in welding, HVAC, CNA, GNA, vet assistant, medical assistant, electrical apprentice, and so many more. We have truck driving. So that's a very short program and then you can start earning a lot of money really soon with that class A license or class C license, whatever it's called. Um, so we have website for that that you'll get emailed at the very end, but those are just two of the options that we have. We have the credit sign and we have the non-credit or continued education and training sign. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. You can also see a lot more information about it on the website. So now I'm going to hand it over to Ms. Kim Bachman, the other assistant director of admissions, and she's going to take it from here. Hi, thank you, Josiah. I am Kim Bachman and I also work in the admissions office. So I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on some of the things that Josiah touched upon and show you exactly where you can find these on the website. So on the previous slide, it was it listed the programs and courses. So if you went to the carolcc.edu and clicked on programs and courses, it would take you to the next page, which highlights all of our different degree programs. In the middle, you can see some of the non-credit career options, and then on the right, the personal enrichment options. So we're going to focus on the left hand side with the degree options, and you can see that there's a list of different areas of study. So you can kind of pick one of these areas of study if you're not exactly sure what you want to do, but you have kind of a broader sense of maybe something that you're interested in. But we have lots of information available to you on our website so you can look and explore different degree programs as well as courses. So we're going to go ahead and click on the STEM and Health Sciences and you can see that there are lots of different degree options that fall under this category. And again, if you don't see something that fits exactly what you're looking for as far as a degree, then you would work with an academic advisor in our customized degree program and select courses based on transfer and your major. So you can see this list of degree programs. We're going to go ahead and select the Digital Fabrication AAS degree, and it takes you to the program and courses page where you can see information about the program. There's faculty information, so lots of highlights to explain kind of what this program would entail. But it also lists all of the degree requirements, so program specific requirements as well as general education requirements. 
So if you have some time later on today, I encourage you to go on the programs and courses page just to check out what options there are for you at Carroll Community College. So moving forward, we have two honors programs at, at the college. So we have two selective admissions programs, uh, the Hill Scholars Honors Program and the STEM Scholars Honors Programs. So both of these programs are designed for graduating seniors entering their first year of college who are willing to commit to two years at Carroll and earn their associate degree. So again, these programs are selective. Admissions is based on GPA, SAT scores, extracurricular activities, and the rigor um, of high school coursework. So unfortunately, the deadline has passed for fall 2020, but it's a great opportunity for rising juniors and rising seniors. So the Hill Scholars Program is intended for any major. So students participate in honor seminar courses each of the four semesters that they are enrolled at Carroll. And then each semester they balance their course load with classes that they need to take for their major and classes that they take for general education requirements. And they would take those as a Hill Scholar cohort. Now the STEM Scholars Program is specific for STEM majors. And because general education requirements are so unique for these programs, students don't take core classes together. However, they do take a cohort seminar class that provides lots of opportunities for them, such as different professional development opportunities, transfer trips, portfolio development, guest speakers. And then they also complete a very high level interdisciplinary collaborative research project in their final semester and that prov provides a great experience for them and it's a great opportunity for them uh, when they transfer on to their four-year institution. So the next slide describes another way to challenge yourself while at Carroll, which is dual enrollment. And dual enrollment is a very popular program that allows students to earn high school credit and college credit simultaneously. So dual, dual enrollment is open to juniors and seniors who attend homeschool, private school, or public school. And so how it works is that students are typically released uh, from the school day to attend classes at the college, and generally it's mod for mod. So if you're taking two classes at the college, maybe English 101 and Psych 101, you may not have maybe either mods one or two at your school or mods three or four at your school. Carroll County Public School students need to discuss dual enrollment with their high school counselor and be approved to take dual enrollment. And then all students need to contact the admissions office for an appointment to register for classes. So on the next slide, you can see that tuition is discounted for dual students, about 33% off our regular tuition price. And this discount is available for up to four classes. If you're a free and reduced meal student, you would only pay college fees. All students are responsible for college textbooks, which can vary in price depending on the course. And then also, we know that you will have such an awesome experience as a duly enrolled student um, that we encourage you to attend Carroll after you graduate high school. So we offer an automatic $500 Jumpstart scholarship for students who have been duly enrolled in at least six credits and earned a 3.0 GPA and register full time the fall after they graduate. Time and transportation can sometimes be barriers to participate in dual enrollment, so we recognize that. The college and Carroll County Public Schools have now partnered together to offer college classes at the high school. So the college has hired CCPS teachers to teach these college classes. Right now, we offer mostly English 101 and math, and the course objectives are the same, but the course is offered at the high school and follows the high school schedule. The costs for these classes are further discounted for dual at CCPS because the student does not pay the college fees. However, they're still able to utilize those student services such as tutoring that Josiah mentioned earlier. So, if you're not doing dual enrollment or you are going to do dual enrollment, but you're also going to do AP, you want to make sure that you definitely take the AP test. AP tests are a valuable way for you to earn college credit at a much lower rate than taking them as per se a freshman or something like that. The way it works is when you get your AP scores, you'll send those in to us. 
If you get a four or five on any of the AP tests, you will definitely earn credit for that. On some of the tests, if you get a three, we will give you credit for that as well. It is very important that you take the test. I know there is a cost associated with taking the test, but if you get a four or five on some of these, it could be saving you $516, $688, or even more, because some of these tests are worth up to two classes, like chemistry and calculus, BC. So it is very important that you take the test, you send us those AP scores so that we can give you the credit and help you get out of college even faster. Now that you've decided, you're definitely going to Carroll, you're going to be a Lynx, you're super excited about it. You're like, what do I do now, Josiah? Well, lucky you asked. You go to www.carrollcc.edu slash apply now. Our application is super simple to do, only takes about 10 minutes. We don't make you write essays about what is your greatest accomplishment as a 17 year old. We don't make you do any other crazy stuff like that. You just fill out the enrollment application and that helps start create your student, your Carol Links account get you that carolcc.edu email, that student email, which you can use for discounts at different places. Nice, you're welcome, you're welcome. And then, once you've done that, then you go on to the placement testing. Kim Bachman's gonna talk to you about placement testing and direct placement, all of that. Yeah, I get to talk to you about all the fun stuff. Um, so now that you've applied, you want to register for classes, but you have to demonstrate college eligibility placement before you can register for classes. So this can be satisfied a number of different ways. So you just have to meet one of these measures up here. So it's one and not um, all of them. So I recommend that you contact us with any specific information regarding your situation. So sometimes it's easier just to look in your home access account, your college board account, and kind of figure out what your scores are and contact us with any questions. So again, you would just need to meet one of the measures that's up here um, and satisfy college level placement that way. If you're interested in dual at CCPS, we will allow you to register with a 2.5 GPA. Many students are very strong but we recognize that maybe you had a difficult transition in ninth grade, um, which is why with counselor approval, the college will let you register with that 2.5 GPA at English 101 at your high school. So on the website, we have course eligibility. So that's what this slide is here. So the link is at the bottom, carolcc.edu slash placement test. And it shows you exactly what that previous slide had on there. So you can check out the website anytime. And again, bring up your home access account or your college board account just to see what your scores are and how it compares to placement at the college. And again, you can always contact us with any questions. So some students will need to take the placement test at Carroll, and that's okay. So we test in English and math, and we encourage you to only test in what you need. For instance, many classes require only English eligibility. So if you want to take an intro to criminal justice class, and that's the only class that you're interested in taking, you do not need to take the math placement test. Now for math, we strongly recommend that you wait to take the placement test until you've finished at least Algebra 2 or the highest math class that you're either currently in or just finished for the mo most accurate results. Students do need to test in order to enroll in any math class higher than Math 123, which is pre-calculus, regardless of SAT or ACT mm -hmm. scores. The placement test can place a student higher than uh, as high as Math 135. Uh, sometimes you would need to take the placement test for um, maybe if you're taking a chemistry class or a computer information systems class. So just contact us with eligibility questions based on what you're thinking about taking. So you can prepare ahead of time for the placement test by reviewing information in the test prep link. So English placement test is an essay and the math placement mm -hmm. test is um, a fill in the blank. And you do have the option to retest in both subjects. So on this slide, the testing times are listed. So uh, we used to have walk-in testing during those hours. However, now that the college is offering remotely, 
um, the walk-in testing is not available. However, you can still take the placement test at Carroll. You would just need to contact the admissions office for information on how to take either the English and or the math placement test. So on the next slide, there's information about um, how to prepare for the placement test. So that's at that link there at the bottom, carolcc.edu slash test prep. So you can check out just information about both of those assessments. And again, contact us with any questions you have regarding your eligibility for college classes and what scores you would need to provide and how to provide them. So now that you've done the enrollment application, you got all your placement test or direct placement done, now it's time to register for classes. So how do you register for classes? Well, Candace alluded to this uh, previously, but currently all students are scheduling appointments to meet with academic advisors. So if you're a brand new freshman, you've just graduated from high school, or you're returning you know, from the military or something like that, you're gonna be a freshman at Carroll, you're gonna call the advising office. Um, that phone number will be emailed to you at the end, but it's 410-386-8435. And you're going to set up an appointment to meet with your academic advisor. They're going to talk to you about each of the different class types, what is the best classes for you based off of what your proposed major is. Now, once again, if you don't know what you want to be when you're a grown up yet, which is OK, we're going to have you take those general education requirements and try out a couple of different things, but are always going to count towards those general education requirements to help you get grad. Make sure you get graduated. No, make sure you graduate on time. If you're gonna be a duly enrolled student, so you're a junior now, gonna be a your rising senior or a sophomore rising junior, then you're gonna meet with Kim Bachman or myself, and we're gonna set up an appointment with you by calling 410-386-8430. You call that, not us, and schedule an appointment to meet with us so that we can talk with you one-on-one, -on -one, get your classroom or get your classes figured out, get your dual enrollment paperwork done, Get that sent back to your high school counselors. That's if you're public school, homeschool, private school, you still meet with us, which is just less paperwork, which is great. We love that. Once again, I want to talk about the classes for the fall. There's going to be four major types of classes for the fall. That is the traditional lecture, which is face to face. We're going to have the smaller class size that you're going to meet with, but that is going to be what we consider like the traditional classroom lecture style. The next is NET, which stands for Internet, which is asynchronous learning. You learn on your own time, but within a given time schedule. So things are still due by Wednesday at midnight or Saturday by midnight or whatever the teacher says, but you can do your homework whenever you want. Everybody knows that teenagers right now are the most awake from 10 a.m. to about 6 a.m. So if that's when you do your homework, that's completely fine, all right? And you can sleep all day like Batman or a bat, I mean. We also have remote synchronous learning, which is like the lecture, except it's done from your house, watching your computer. So it's like Netflix, but you're getting smarter, much smarter, okay, because you're going to class and hopefully your brain's being used more. And then we also have hybrid. Hybrid is a mixture of asynchronous learning and either face-to-face -face or remote synchronous learning. So that hybrid could be you go in and then you come home and you do stuff on the internet, or it could be you meet a remote synchronously, and then you're doing stuff asynchronously as well. So try saying asynchronous a lot really fast. That's hard, okay? But you're gonna meet with an advisor. We're gonna go through that with you to help, help you with your schedule. You're not gonna have to do this by yourself. Now let's talk about payment plan. You've registered for classes. You met with your academic advisor. You're excited. Now it's time to pay. So we have a couple of different options for you. We have um, the payment plan that you can sign up for. You can just pay for the classes outright. There's a many different options for that that you can do. Payment is due for the fall on August 3rd. August 3rd is not the registration deadline. You can still register. You still meet with advisors after that time and register for classes. August 3rd is the time that you have to make that first payment or set up payment plan or pay for your classes, or after that, when you register, you have to immediately sign up for a payment plan or pay for your classes. Just to keep in mind, if you're gonna go full-time, it's gonna be right around that $2,500, $2,600 
a semester and you only pay for one semester at a time, not for the whole year. So you only pay for what you're taking. Did I miss anything? No. All right. We also have financial aid available. So if you want to apply for financial aid, you first must have your GED or high school diploma. Also, if you're a male, you must have applied for selective service, also known as the draft. To apply for FAFSA, if you're a senior now and you haven't applied for FAFSA, do it today. Do it with mom or dad. You need their tax information. Do it today. If you're a junior, rising senior, do it on or after October 1st of this fall year. That is the first day of the school year that you can apply for financial aid for the following year. To get the most things that you would be eligible for, you must apply for FAFSA by February 20th. And the institutional deadline is April 1st. You still fill it out. If you're taking summer classes this year, if you're gonna take fall classes with us, and you haven't done anything yet, still fill it out. Now you might be asking, Josiah, what is FAFSA? FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. That is what it's called, the free application for federal student aid. If you go to a website that's not www.fafsa.ed.gov and try to do the FAFSA, they're going to charge you. Then it's no longer the free application for federal student aid. We want you to do the free application for federal student aid and put your information in there and then not have to pay for it. OK, once again, that becomes available on October 1st. I speak words, yeah. That is what the page looks like. So if you're looking at that slide right now, that is what the FAFSA website looks like. Make sure you're at that website when you're filling out your FAFSA. Now, over to Kim Bachman. She's going to talk to you about free money, also known as scholarships. All right, well, I have some good news. So for those of you who may have wanted to apply for the Maryland Community College Promise Scholarship, but thought the deadline had passed, um, so it was previously March 1st, but you can still apply for this. There are very specific steps to follow, and we recommend that you contact our financial aid office for more details. So they can be reached at financialaid at carolcc.edu or by calling 410-386-8437. So again, there are very particular steps that you would need to follow for the Maryland Community College Promise Scholarship, but it is still available. So I encourage you to apply and reach out to the Financial Aid Office for more information. And then next, if you're seeking accommodations at the college level, you need to request these every semester by meeting with a disability support office. If you had high school accommodations, the college does not automatically receive these and college accommodations may vary from what you experienced in high school. So the contact information is listed here for the disability support office, but we definitely encourage you to take a look at that new student info link for the general guidelines. It provides some more details as to what documentation you may need prior to meeting with the disability support office. Hi, I didn't have sound, did I? <laughs> so here we are, I'm Candace again. So we have a couple of things that have come in through the chat um, that I just want to address and make sure that everyone feels comfortable with. So the first thing is when the session is over today, we are going to send a follow up email to all attendees so you can apply with any remaining questions. So you'll get an email from us and you'll be able to reply back and we will be sure that all of your questions are answered. Um, the second thing is, is that you are going to speak with an academic advisor or an admissions counselor before you take any next steps. So we are going to help you and we want to help you. So you can see the phone number for the admissions office up on the slide here is 410-386-8430, uh, admissions at carolcc.edu is our email address. So you can contact, contact us anytime with questions there's a lot of questions about eligibility for placement testing, how, you know, GPA, things like that. How do I get into classes? Give us a call if you're unsure. Placement testing is if you don't have another way to place directly into classes. And so Kim was co covering the eligibility requirements a couple minutes ago. 
Many students place directly in the classes with their GPA. Uh, they could place directly in the classes with SATs or ACTs. They're not required, but we can use them. If you don't have another way to place into classes, then you will take the placement test. The best way to figure that out is to call us and we will talk you through it. We know the questions to ask and we can go through the list very quickly with you. Or you can go to the website again and look at that to see uh, how you would be placing. So set up an appointment with an advisor or with an admissions counselor by calling the admissions office. It will be through Microsoft Teams or over the phone. We are still taking appointments as if we're at the campus. We are meeting with students daily. We have tons and tons of appointments available. So we will talk to you whenever you need. If you call us or email us asking for an appointment, you'll get one pretty quickly. If you are graduating from high school or you've been out of high school for a little while, you already have a degree, you would want to contact a uh, the advising office at 410-386-8435 and they will schedule you for an appointment there. If you call our office, we'll refer you to them if you need to make an appointment with them. So no problem either way. And then you'll see non-credit and career training. There's an email address for them here and their phone number 386-8100. So if you have any questions for them at all, you can give them a call. Again, we're going to be following up with any uh, questions that come in through the chat. So what we're going to do now is we are going to play one more commercial to kind of, you know, end up with what we're doing. That'll give you another minute or two to continue to send in chat questions that we can answer. And then that's going to be it. We really, really appreciate you joining us today. We know this is different. We know you want to come to campus. We want to be there too. So please, please contact us. We'll help you get started with everything that you need to know. Give us a call, email us, contact us, reply to the email, any one of those ways, and we'll make sure that we get back with you right away. So we're gonna play a final commercial right now, and then we will continue to answer chats after this is over. This will be posted on the Open House website page uh, as soon as we're over, so thank you. Okay, so I don't see any final questions coming in. I think that we are going to conclude our session because we have no final class questions coming in. Thank you so much for attending today. Reach out to us, get in contact with us. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it and hopefully we'll be seeing you soon. Thank you.